became a Muslim a few months ago at the Dawah table here which is in Kilburn High Street North London right could you tell us why you became a Muslim because I think you were look you were very noisy you were looking at Islam before but what made you accept Islam at that point on the Dawah table here because the, the beliefs that are forced upon me as a Jamaican is Christianity but when something doesn't make sense to you, eventually you reject it because I'm, I'm 22 years old now, I've got more responsibility, so things, you look at things differently. So when I'm researching into it now, already I already believe there's one God. So as I'm researching into um, Islam, I believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the messenger of God. That's already my shahada. So when I came to the Dawah table, I spoke to one of the brothers here, asked a few questions and my belief was Islam. So from that point I took shahada. Alhamdulillah, and you didn't have a beard at that point, now you've grown a beard as well, Alhamdulillah. And this is only, it's good, and that was only a few months ago, I believe, is that right? Seven, about seven, eight months ago now. Alhamdulillah, okay. How has your life changed, uh, Daniel? You used to be called Daniel, but now you've accepted the name Daniel, Muhammad Daniel. Muhammad Daniel, Alhamdulillah. So, how has your life changed from before to now? Could you give a tell, tell us a bit about why, how it's changed, please? The first change was accepting Islam and understanding the reason why I'm created and that's to worship Allah and understanding why my heart, even though I know I'm going to die, the reason my heart beats and why I'm here right now is to worship Allah. That's the first step. From there, I know what I have to do and my life has changed by following the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, being more polite to my family. Since I've embraced the deen, I've got more of a relationship with all of my family, even if they're happy about me being Muslim or not. I've got more of a relationship with all of them because I've got brothers and sisters all over the place. And I try to talk to them all now and I'm more patient because before I was a very, you know, wasn't very patient at all. <laughs> I'll just leave it like that. But it's changed my way for the best. And anyone who's around me knows this because they can see even those who ain't Muslim say, listen, make sure you stay with it because they know what life was like before. So it's an improvement by far. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, and uh, what sort of life was it generally before you became a Muslim? Without exposing myself, I'll just say Jahil. And for those who don't know what Jahil means, it means ignorance. You know? Okay, and uh, how do you feel now that you're Muslim within yourself? Alhamdulillah, I know my purpose. I feel it's like, it's like a guy that goes outside his house not knowing where he's going compared to a guy that's on his journey and knows where he's going. Alhamdulillah. And before you were a Christian, I think, is that right? Yeah, non, I've got to say, non-practicing Christian I was before. As I, but since I've embraced the deen, I've read the Bible more than I ever have in my whole life. And more than the majority of people in my family also. Okay, okay. Uh, which sort of Christian? Was it a Catholic Christian or any particular denomination? Grandparents are Jehovah Witnesses and they give the talks. My father, he, would, he wouldn't call himself a particular type of Christian, but he just had the King James Bible. My grandparents are the same way. My wife, they're just, um, I wouldn't know what to call them. They call themselves Christians as well. So I, wouldn't, I think it's Baptist or one of those. But they were practicing Christians at the time. And alhamdulillah, um, the woman I was with at the time as well, um, embraced the deen the same day as me. So alhamdulillah, she was a practicing Christian now. Alhamdulillah, she's a practicing Muslim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, would you like to give any advice to Muslims uh, about how to give dawah or whether they should give dawah or not? to non-Muslims? Yeah. My advice to Muslims that want to give dawah is it's obligatory on every Muslim to give dawah. It's the way in which Islam was spread in the first place. So if you reject giving dawah, then you reject the reason you're a Muslim. You've got to ask yourself, why are you a Muslim? If from you know the answer to why you're a Muslim, you can tell someone else why you're a Muslim and call them to this beautiful way of living. The next step I'll say is from the understanding I have of the Quran, obviously, because I'm, I'm still new, each prophet and messenger, peace and blessings be upon them all, was taken from a nation to a nation. When I was in school, there was no one coming to me telling me about Islam. That's because they wasn't from where I was from, so they wouldn't know how to. But you see now, everyone, everywhere around the world, there's Muslims. Whether you're from Jamaica, whether you're from India, whether you're from Pakistan, whether you're from America, whether, no matter where you're from. So now we can get the message out there more, and it is obligatory on us to do so. So I'd recommend you give dawah, because we will return to Allah. And would you like to give any advice to non-Muslims that are watching this uh, on YouTube or on our website, uh, whether they're Christians or whatever? Would you like to give them some advice, please? First piece of advice I'd give to non-Muslims is do not take the media as a god. 
as you see the people who present the news change. So as we all know, the biggest lies we all know is the media, is the news. So don't listen to what the news says. If you want to know about Islam, ask a Muslim. That's like, if I, don't, if I want to know about how to bake a cake, I'm not going to go to a mechanic. Do you understand? If I want to know about Islam, go to a Muslim. That's the first piece of advice. The second piece of advice is, once you see the smile, if you even look around, the smile is sunnah. Sunnah is the way of the Prophet to smile. It's a peaceful way of living. You know, it's a peaceful way of living. Stress-free. All you have to do is say thank you five times a day. It's a big difference in your life and you'll know why you were created. Because even those of you who say they believe and are still not Muslim are still unsure and have their own beliefs, their own feelings, their own desires of what things should be. But this is what it is, the Quran and the Sunnah. So Alhamdulillah, if you want to find out about Islam, we're here at Kilburn High Road every Saturday, inshallah. Come down, we have books. We have brothers here that are willing to take out time to talk to you about the deen. We'll go for a meal if you want to go for a meal. We'll take each other's phone numbers any which way you want to talk, so long as you're willing to have a conversation for the sake of God or the Creator, as some may want to call Him. Alhamdulillah. Would you like to add anything else? or? Also, I'd like to speak to those leaving the deen, if that's okay. Those who are leaving the deen to go and listen to this rap music and think they can just be a, 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 um, a, a part-time Muslim or those who you know, don't want to follow the way of the greatest man to ever walk the face of the earth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My advice to you is know what you're doing because where you're going is hellfire. If you believe, you should believe you're going to the hellfire. You can't be Muslim and you're going to only be Muslim around Muslims. There's an ayah in the Quran about that. When they're around the believers, they say, yes, we believe. But when they go back to their shaitans, they say, we were verily, we were just mocking. So this is very dangerous, it's very serious that we return to the Quran and the Sunnah because me, where I come from, I can tell you where you're going. Now if I'm trying to go where you was and you're trying to come where I was, does it, that's a bit confusing, isn't it? The Quran and the Sunnah is the purpose of life, not to listen to music. When we was created, music wasn't here. When we was created, money wasn't here. So therefore it can't be the purpose of creation. So return back to the Deen, return back to the Quran and the Sunnah, live this beautiful way of living and save yourself from the hellfire, inshallah. That's my advice. Brother standing here, do you want to ask any questions? Okay, uh, Daniel, Muhammad Daniel, Jazakallahu khairan for uh, agreeing to be interviewed and we're going to put on our website and YouTube, inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and peace unto those who follow the guidance. Jazakallahu khairan. You are never alone. You are never